All right, you guys. Oh my goodness. I have been nervous all day long about this. This is going to be so much fun. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Seven Figure Healers, where we have a mission to enjoy the time, energy, money, and resources to generously take care of ourselves and everyone we love and serve. My name is Laura DeFranco, and I'm the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we're waking the world up to what's possible. And I am so, so honored and excited to be here with all of you guys today. Eek. Yes, i um, been waiting for this show date. You guys, healers, we devote our lives to learning the art and craft, right? But we don't always learn what it takes to thrive. It's time to serve from an overflow, to leave a ripple from a place of authentic abundance, health, and wealth. Here today to help me with this mission is the author of Writing as a Path to Awakening, master meditation teacher, speaker, workshop leader, and writing coach, Albert Flynn De Silver. I'm going to get him on screen with me here. There he is. Welcome, Albert. Hello, hello, Laura. Delighted to be here. Hi, everyone. I'm really, really excited to have this conversation with you today. Um, I also want to just welcome all of the people who joined us on Zoom today. You guys, thank you so much. I'm so incredibly grateful for the amazing community of brave healers who are trailblazing this revolution with me. Thank you for being here, you guys. Um, I know that showing up some days is harder than others, and I appreciate you so much for being here. Um, I see a lot of my authors in the house, you know, type in the, uh, the chat if you're one of my writers, if you're one of my authors, I want to see who's here today. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Get ready to hear from Albert, our amazing guest. And then as questions come up for you guys, go ahead and type them in the chat, all right? Um, my amazing moderator, Teresa, will make sure we don't miss any of those questions. We're gonna have a Q&A time a little bit later in the hour. Also, get ready with your notebook, okay? Notebook and pen. If you have a piece of paper, notebook, something to write on, you're gonna want that because we're gonna be led through a powerful writing exercise in just a bit. And of course, we're going to give you some contact information on how to connect on Albert's website and all the good stuff. So let's get started. Albert, thanks again for being here. Thanks for being my very first guest on this show. And thanks for being awesome. I know that one thing that matters to you is helping us live an awakened life. Will you start us off by talking a little bit more about that? Uh, sure. Awakened life. Well, I think we're living an awakened life right now. <laughs> we're on Zoom in good company with good intention. And uh, I think maybe a, a uh, an awakened life does begin with intention, you know, just becoming super conscious of what we want in the world, um, how we want to be in the world, what we want to offer the world, what we want to give, instead of coming from that place of, of um, uh, you know, wanting to to take what's the world going to give me? Uh, what can I give the world? Um, to be awake is to to be vibrant, to be in touch with our energy, um, that energy of generosity, that energy of creativity, uh, which is our our natural state. And uh, I know for myself and for many of us, um, we're conditioned otherwise, right? We're, we're conditioned into mediocrity, um, we're conditioned into fear, um, we're conditioned into division uh, through social structures, through political structures, through all of it. And um, so our job to, you know, to, to commit and to surrender to the alternative is, is to show up uh, with a vow of awakening, to 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 show up with that that brightness, with that creativity, um, to counter the conditioning, you know, to counter um, the the division, and to live from truth. Um, so that that's a little bit of 
of Wicca. I mean, we could talk about, <laughs> about <laughs> what that could mean for for hours, but that's a little bit of, of what it means to me. Yeah, I think you did a really good job on a really, really big question, right? That's, um, it's a big topic. So do you remember an, an event or a moment where you kind of shifted into this being a lifestyle for you? Was there a turning point in your life about it? <laughs> well, how far back do you want to go? <laughs> and and how how deep do we want to go in terms of the, you know, turning points? Um, there have been many of them. You know, sometimes they, they seem rather um, insignificant uh, and quiet. Other times they're very dramatic. Um, like many people, I have a, a pretty dramatic um, a childhood story of abuse and addiction. And, um, you know, and I write about this at length in, in my books. Um, I wrote a whole memoir about um, recovery from alcohol addiction and waking up one day handcuffed to a hospital bed with no idea how I got there, under arrest, et cetera. So that was a wake-up call. <laughs> that was a level of wake-up call. Um, and I was somehow still alive. And because of that gift of life, um, I realized that it was time for a change. You know, I wasn't going to get another chance. And this was this was the invitation to show up in a different way and and to revision who I thought I was ultimately. Um, you know, there's been other um, years later when I, I finally found the art of meditation. And um, I was on retreat at um, at Spirit Rock Meditation Center here in, in Northern California. And I had been sitting for, for five days doing nothing but breathing. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I just had this incredible experience. You know, it's really it's really radical to do nothing in our culture, especially we don't, I think we take it for, for granted. Um, but most people, I think, do have trouble being doing nothing. Um, even when they think they're not doing much, they're usually distracting themselves. As humans, that's our favorite thing to do is to distract ourselves from being present. Because it's kind of, in, in a lot of ways, it's scary to be present. Um, it's scary to be awake and alive because there's vulnerability, right? There's, uh, there's uncertainty. Uh, the truth of existence is... Um, is that that it that it's uncertain and um and so we don't know and we want to have kind of control and um, so we kind of distract ourselves into the illusion of control which causes all kinds of problems uh, but when you when you meditate when you sit and and do nothing when you surrender to to presence um some really interesting things can happen in my experience, and I know many of you have probably experienced this in your own lives, um, but particularly on, on silent retreat, um, you know, there's something that, that happens on silent retreat um, where if you really give yourself to it, um, it, 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 things can lift, things can shift, energies can be released from the body. And that was the case in, in my experience of having a very dramatic um, release of, of some sort of just stuck traumatic energy. And um, so I think that that that's kind of an example of a, of a point of awakening. Um, all of a sudden having access to um, a lot more emotion, um, a lot more clarity of emotion. So I don't know if that, that gets at your question. Yeah, but... <laughs> that, I love how you said I had, I finally had access to it. Um, and since we're going to talk about meditation next, that this is perfect. Um, so here you are at a silent meditation retreat. Was that the first experience you had? Like, did a friend come and say, Hey, <laughs> do this with me? Like, how did you start? Yeah. You know, it's, um, uh, it was curious cause I hadn't really dealt with, um, why I drank in the first place and why I was checking out and, um, Eventually, I did wind up going to therapy, um, which is also highly recommended as a as a, a point, a tool in the awakening box. Um, 
And uh, I had I was living in San Francisco, spending a lot of time driving out to um, Point Reyes National Seashore and, and West Marin to be with the redwoods and to to heal through the power of the non-human world, being in, in nature and wild places. And you can't get to Point Reyes without passing by Spirit Rock. And um, there was a sign on the side of the road, you know, Spirit Rock Meditation Center. And I, I thought, <laughs> I used to misread it. I thought it said Spirit Rock Mediation Center. And my friend was like, no, it's meditation, dope. And um, I didn't even know what that was. You know, I was in my 20s. I was a kind of a lost puppy dog. And she said, well, they do these Monday night sittings. And you go and you sit and and you watch your breath and uh, focus on your heart. And all this was just completely alien to, to me. And uh, so, yeah, a friend did, did really nudge me there. And I went to one of these Monday night things with Jack Cornfield. This was in the mid-90s. And... Um, and it was a total revelation to, to sit there and to, to just to be and to to look at, at the heart and to, to have this intention of uh, loving kindness and compassion. Um, my attention had just never really gone there. These things were just abstractions, really. Um, so. I love it. Um, and I grew up in, the, I grew up in Marin. And so, uh, but you know, that half of my life, That's I, was, right. I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know, I know all the places you're talking about, except for spirit rock, like that wasn't a place in the first half of my life that I ever discovered. I think if I still lived there, I would be there pretty much every day these days. So I'll have to travel back and uh, we can we can do some silent med meditating together sometime. <laughs> totally. Well, I'm pretty much living across the street these days. Nice. So, well, yeah, it's an amazing spot. So this means that you've essentially been practicing for, for well over a couple of decades now, um, practicing meditation. You are known for merging the art of creative writing with mindfulness meditation, which is part of the reason I've been one of your fans for a very long time. And Writing as a Path to Awakening was a wonderful book that I love so much. I know that Teresa is going to put the link in the chat for everybody to check it out on Amazon. Um, but tell us a little bit more about what you've discovered about this merging of the two things. And you know, I'm a, I'm a, a writer and I, you have a lot of writers on this call with you today. Fantastic. Yeah, so there I was in the mid '90s, um, going to uh, the Spirit Rock, and I remember one of the very first times I went, um, Jack Cornfield was reading poetry, like almost the entire talk, you know, which was supposed to be a Dharma talk, was filled with poetry, you know, poetry by Rumi, poetry by Mary Oliver, poetry by local poets I'd never heard of. And so there was this immediate um, connection between the power of language and spirituality, um, language and awakening, um, storytelling and awakening. And um, so this was also very much interwoven with this, this sense of kind of waking up for, or waking up to a language of the heart. You know, it, it, someone who didn't grow up in a, an environment that, in, in which one talked about their emotions. You know, the, the limits of your language are the limits of your life. I think that's a Wittgenstein quote. Um, I was about to quote you for that one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, this, is, uh, this is an incredible understanding that if you only have a few words to language your heart, this is very limiting, right? And I, so I think what... what um, meditation offers us and what what writing and creativity offers us is a is a, a broader language of the heart um, and not just the happy loving bits but also the the difficult bits the fear and the rage and the anger if we can give language to that we can we can start to discover what what those energies are and and have some sense of of um, capacity around emotion so that we don't become enslaved to our emotions, but we, we can be in partnership. Um, we can be in um, 
cahoots, as it were, with our emotions to navigate uh, that, that full spectrum of being human in the world. Um, and, and that's really what writing is a path to awakening is. It's sort of it's waking up through language, waking up through the practice of poetry, through the practice of storytelling, through the practice of memoir, through the practice of um, uh, playwriting, whatever whatever genre you want to to work with, whatever way that you feel drawn to language, but using that language to to wake up to a, a broader sense of of capacity and possibility in your life and um and, and the gifts that you have to share with the world. Oh my gosh, you guys, uh, Albert is dropping some serious nuggets. I hope you guys are typing all of the nugget quotes that have come out of his mouth so far. Type them in the chat for me, y'all, okay? Um, and I know my writers and my, my healer writers are resonating. I know I am, I could, I could selfishly keep you on this merging of the writing and the mindfulness all day, just because I know how powerful it's been for me. Um, and the writers that have been in my world know that they feel a bigger energy. Um, they feel a healing as they write. And they also feel the power of helping the readers have an experience with this connection. Is there anything else you want to say about that? Um, yeah, I think it, it, it's it's so much about a larger communion um, with um, with well with reader, right? Reader is is this sort of abstraction. When you write a book, you don't know who your reader is. You're sort of talking into the void, <laughs> which is a really weird sensation in a lot of ways. Uh, and it's it's kind of hard, especially in our culture, it's hard to to uh, to ground in that without anticipating or without wishing or longing for um, uh, communication, right? And being like, oh, well, I want you know a thousand people to read this, or ten thousand, or a hundred thousand, or a million, or blah blah blah. But I think. You know, the older I get, the more I realize that that I'm doing this for me, and I'm doing this for for my own awakening, not in that sort of selfish, egoic way, but really so that I can sort of navigate this larger sense of self beyond beyond the tiny little Albert in my head, um, and and trust that that knowledge, that wisdom, that broad understanding is going to radiate out into the world. Um, and, and my job is to be real. My job is to be vulnerable, to be true, even if that's sometimes ugly, even if that's sometimes embarrassing, even if that's sometimes terrifying. Um, and what I found writing my memoir was that is exactly the case. Like I wrote some of the most mortifying, embarrassing, terrible shit in that book, you know, about my, my personal behavior, right? Uh, at a certain point in my life. And and I did that because I, I needed to sort of, well, first of all, to get it out of my body. You know, it was like some of this shit was just trapped in my viscera and I needed it out. So it was kind of this expulsion. And then I sort of also was thinking sort of like, well, this is this is our common humanity, right? Who of us have, have not done terrible things? You know, who have not who of us have not behaved poorly at one time or another. Um, and, and I was sort of trusting if I can be vulnerable on the page, then, then maybe this will be, um, maybe I could also be held or understood. And um, so it was, it, it felt very risky. And, um, but by and large, the interesting thing is that people tend to relate and, and tend to appreciate it. Um, yes. So, yeah, I love it. I, I love um, that you're talking about this piece so much because it's what I've been sharing with everybody about if you can really go there, you're going to res resonate with more people because you did that because you were brave like that or crazy or both. <laughs> and um, this is the brave healers. Exactly. Right? These are you're looking at a lot of them today for sure. 
Um, okay, this writing thing, you know, speaking of writers, um, I know that helping people become a better writer is part of your jam as well. What do you want us writers to know about being a better writer? Uh, that you are inherently brilliant. And I, and I don't mean that lightly. And I think the, 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 one of the primary things that I see in my classes over and over again is just sort of self-denial and, and a doubt in, in our capacity. And our nature really is that of creative wisdom and creative genius. I've been teaching for 25 years and over and over and over again, I see it when, when people are um, reminded of that truth when you hold things in a sacred space and 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 offer uh, a people a place um, of safety and of care and of love that their their natural creative wisdom comes forth and so this whole myth of talent well some people are just talented I don't really buy it. I think if you are um, willing to to practice, you know, if you feel a real drive and love for the art of poetry or for the art of storytelling or for playwriting or whatever it is, and you just give yourself to it, um, you will be naturally moved to read, 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 read like crazy, to write, 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 write like crazy, <laughs> and you are going to create beautiful things it's just it's just the way it goes and um so that's kind of the essence of of my teaching i really what i do is i remind people of their creative genius that's that's pretty much all i do and we have fun together and try not to take ourselves too seriously <laughs> really so. important really important yes I, we all need reminders um sometimes daily I know I do. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the more you do it, I think sometimes the more you get in, sometimes you can get in your head about it um, at certain levels. Um, what is it about that upper limit problem? If any of you have read The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, you know, you hit another level and you're faced with the same things all over again. You're, you're like, really? I think I've been there before. Mm, you know? Um, so, you recently went through something pretty powerful and difficult, and you pulled yourself um, off of social. And I wonder if you, um, you know, would share that with us. I know that we talked about it earlier and you said you wouldn't mind sharing about this. I know that um, our audience is, is going to appreciate this story. Yeah, so um, well, I'm just kind of in this transition zone with um, with the teaching and through the pandemic, um, really since around 2019, um, just been sort of reformulating uh, my my whole teaching and, and what I was doing. And you know, I think for all of us in in this time over these last couple of years, uh, it's been total flux and. So I, I got on this bandwagon with a new online program and and uh, and business, and it was going quite well for a couple of years, and then it has, and then it decided not to, <laughs> or I decided it not to. I don't know exactly how it how it went, but it's um it's been challenging this year, and uh, so I'm sort of reformulating, and I've taken a step back and. Um, I have not been on social media for, you know, after three years of kind of part of the program is like, oh, you got to be on social media all the time. You got to do, 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 and then to do the, the video, then to do the, the Instagram, then to do the Facebook. Thing. And it's just like, it was making me crazy. And, um, and so I went back to my writing and uh, I went back to this monster book project that I've been working on for several years, but had taken a year and a half off from. and. Um, and so I'm just in this a little bit of a no zone right now um, because I don't have a, a major source of income, um, but I do have my writing, <laughs> which feels like everything. And uh, I do have a little bit of teaching here and there, which is exciting, but it's, it definitely feels like uh, 
a, a little bit of an abyss and uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. And yet I'm just trusting, you know, trusting that that things will, I'll be called in in um, spirit's time and and things will, will work out. For sure they will. I, um, I really appreciate you sharing that. I know a lot of people are going to really nod there. I see some nods <laughs> as you're talking about some of that. So thanks you guys for your head nods there. Trusting. Yes, definitely. So you have writing as a, speaking of your writing, writing is a path to awakening. Amazing book. You guys, you got the link. We'll put them in the, um, the description and notes below too, for everybody. So they can grab it later. What are some of the other books that you've written? Will you tell us the others? Uh, yes, yeah, so a bunch of little obscure chat books and some two poetry books, um, one called uh, Letters to Early Street. Um, I wrote a memoir called Beamish Boy. And um, then actually I've, I'm about to launch a, a tiny little book on the spirit of mountain biking, <laughs> which is kind of funny. <laughs> It's actually really about the spirit of nature and I'm, out, I'm a, a total devout and practicing mountain biker. It's one of the ways that I get very deeply connected to uh, the natural world. And uh, it, it just has a very um, powerful embodied spirituality for me. So I wrote, um, and I had an essay that was published in this really fantastic magazine uh, in 2021 um, called Adventure Journal. And um, and then I thought, wow, this is really, you know, I've always wanted to write something about, about that spirituality. One of my favorite books um, of all time is this um, book uh, by um, Dolores LaChapelle called Deep Powder Skiing. And it's about backcountry skiing. And she talks about it in these very philosophical, spiritual terms. And, um, and I don't know if anyone had done that about cycling particularly mountain biking so anyway so I'm, I'm working on that I have my little proof copy here oh, that nice. um, will eventually I'm just printing that myself um, but that's that's those are the main books for now okay we'll be ready for that one so make sure and drop me how we can all get it when it's ready okay In northern California is an amazing place to mountain bike gosh yeah and so is Sedona Yes, yes, it is. We'll We're get gonna, to that. Though. Yes, we will. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, but first, you um, agreed to run us through an exercise today. So thank you for that. I can't wait. You guys get ready for, you know, have a notebook and pen ready. And we're going to do a little something before the writing. But um, I'm going to turn it over to you for that. Excellent. Great. Well, what I'd love to offer you, we have, I think we have about six or seven minutes total. And so what I'd love to begin with is um, a, a brief little meditation. And this is just a, uh, an introductory meditation to kind of give you a taste of what can be found in the book and, and in some of the teachings and um, what I'll be offering in Sedona in April. Um, so I want to invite you to find a way to sit comfortably and, and at ease wherever you are. Um, you can roll back from your computer for a few minutes, a couple minutes here. And um, just find your seat, as it were. Um, find a way to sit comfortably and at ease with your feet flat on the floor and your hands just resting easily in your lap and allow your eyes to close gently. And I'd like you to begin with a single deep breath in through the nose and exhale out through the mouth. And then just find that natural rhythm of your breathing body. Keeping your eyes closed and your attention focused inward. Realizing for these next couple of minutes that there's absolutely nothing that you need to do. There's absolutely nothing that you need to figure out. There's absolutely nothing that you need to get right. 
that there's nothing to manage or to change. Um, what a relief. The invitation is simply to connect with your breathing body. And simply to notice, to enter into the spirit of curiosity. What is real, true, and vibrant in me right now? And to hone in a little more specifically, I'd like to invite you to bring your hands, both hands, one on top of the next, to the center of your chest, to your heart center. And simply breathe into this heart center for a few breaths. with that open sense of curiosity. Allowing your presence to be concentrated there. And I'd like you to invite in a word, a single word. What word arises from your heart? And see if you can sense into not thinking of this word so much as allowing this word to not so much come from mind, but to come from body, to come from heart. And just be with this word for a minute or so. And then let's take another single deep breath inward through the nose. And again, exhaling out through the mouth. And when you're ready, you can let your hands fall back into your lap. And open your eyes when you're ready. And I'd like you to grab your notebook. Or if you're on a laptop, to open to a new blank page and simply type your word at the top of this new page or handwrite your word at the top of the page.
And for the next three minutes, I'd like to invite you to free write a letter to this word. And you might tweak the tense of it if you need to, to make it sound authentic and fluid. Um, and address that letter as if it were a, a being, as if it were an animal. And you can begin, dear blank, whatever that, that word is. And I'll type this in the chat. And you can always change your word if there's a new word coming in in this moment. Maybe it's an emotion, a word of emotion. So it, it could be dear tenderness or dear aliveness or dear fear or dear joy or dear peace, whatever it is. And for the next three minutes, we're just gonna free write from margin to margin. Just keep that pen moving, keep your fingers dancing across the page. Don't think too much about it. You're not gonna have to share this here or with anybody. So you can be raw, you can be real, you can be open, you can be inappropriate, you can get it right, you can get it wrong, it doesn't matter. <laughs> just allow, just allow. Dear fear, dear joy, and talk to this, be in conversation with this word, with this feeling, with this idea, and see where it takes you, okay? And I will, I'll ding the vocal bell in about two minutes or so. Have fun with this. Uh, you gave me a reason to use my new bell. Ding, <laughs> ding, <laughs> ding. It's funny, you can't really hear them on Zoom. 
But uh, yeah, so find a way to, to bring us at least to a temporary close. And uh, I encourage you to, to carry on with this. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that much more time uh, right now. Um, but yeah, I'd be so curious to, to kind of hear how this, how this goes for you and to follow this out. Um, and uh, who knows, you know, with, with a free write, oftentimes uh, it can turn into, you know, a poem, it can turn into a scene for a story, it can turn into a bit of dialogue for a play, you just never know. Um, but that invitation is there to, to be real, to be true, to be spontaneous and open and curious. So I, I loved it. That. Albert. was helpful. Uh, I loved it. And the, a funny little thing for me was uh, when I write on a notebook, um, I always stay more narrow in this line, but you helped me go past that red line today. Thank you for that. Because <laughs> you mentioned go from side to side, right? And I had never really heard anybody say that before. I'm like, yeah, why am I staying here? Right? Why not just go all the way out? Um, right outside the lines. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, we're going to invite uh, one or two of you to share an aha, maybe, you know, not necessarily the, the writing today, but anyone else have a little aha like that? And you're free to just unmute and, and share with us for a moment. Anyone? Uh, you can raise your hand. You can say me in the chat. Anybody going to be brave enough for that? All right. I'm going to be brave. <laughs> okay, good. Excellent. <laughs> Go for it, Millie. Um, well, I'm a little embarrassed to, to say that I've never heard of Albert because I'm just now diving into writing after being a single mom and working two jobs. But my aha moment, it's I, I had the word serenity. And when I started writing about it, I realized that that's what I feel when I'm out harvesting my rose petals. That's what I feel when I see squirrels playing around. That's what I feel when I see butterflies. It's like I really enjoy my little short walks. And, and it's very healing to be able to not only feel that while I'm outside, but to realize how healing that exercise was in just those two minutes and being able to be present with it in, in writing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Millie. That's so beautiful. And I love that word, serenity. And I love your share because it's, right? It, it just takes two minutes. You know, sometimes we think, oh, I have to sit for a half an hour to be a good meditator, or I have to write for an hour to be a good writer. And no, sometimes just two minutes, two minutes a day Love of, it. of meditation, of concentrated practice, right? Of, of focus. And writing is one of the most powerful points of focus we have as human beings. And so never underestimate the power of that intentionality that goes in there um, and gets onto the page. It's uh, really beautiful. So thank you for that. So you guys, we wanted to leave a few minutes for some questions. Um, Teresa, were there any that came through while we were working on all of that today? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Millie asked, how many books have been written? Um, so Millie, I'm not sure uh, if you were asking. By Albert? That's what I, yeah. Oh yeah, how By many, Albert? you know, what's your total number, Albert? <laughs> <laughs> if you count all the little chat books, um, oh gosh, you know, and a chat book is just like a little small um, poetry book put out by a small press. Um, but I think there's about, there's probably eight of those. Um, and then there's there's Writing as a Path to Awakening, there's Beamish Boy, um, there is Walking Tooth and Cloud is a book of prose poems uh, that came out in 2007. Um, it was kind of a wacky experiment in that genre. Um, yeah, so I don't know, what is that? 10? At least 10, at 11? least 10. <laughs> <Something like laughs> 10, that? 11, yeah. You do, you do lose count after a while when you just, you know, when writing is your thing. And I should mention, I'm um, because I've been learning how to write novels for the past, I want to say 
seven years, I've been trying to teach myself how to write novels because I don't know how to write novels. And uh, so I've written, I'm working on my third novel. And so I've, I've written two totally unpublished novels. They're in the drawer, um, collecting dust, uh, but they're, I consider them my warm up novels. But this third one, I'm feeling like I'm going to finish this thing and I'm going to try and get it published. I think it's pretty, it's a lot of, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Good. Um, and so we're yeah, ready. You just we're, never know. We're ready for that. So you're actually going to be doing a much more in-depth workshop for us at the Brave Healer Writers Retreat in April. That's going to be April 4 to 8 in Sedona, Arizona. If y'all haven't been there, being in Sedona in and of itself is an experience. It's an amazing place. And Albert, Absolutely. I am so excited to have you there. Do you want to tell us just a tiny bit about what you might be planning for us? Um, yes. And I just want to say a couple of words about Sedona is like, it's one of my favorite places on the planet. It is truly magical. And actually in this new little, um, book, I have a, an essay about Sedona and, um, so, uh, gee, you know, we are going to, we're going to meditate <laughs> we're going to go a little deeper with our meditation. Uh, I have a couple of favorite practices, um, and I don't want to give away exactly which one we'll do, but it will be an embodied practice for sure that will will help us access some of those deeper um, creative images that are that are often like woven into the fiber of our being, and that we we can't often access them just by thinking about it. You know, it just helps to be in conscious movement. Uh, or conscious embodiment. Um, and sometimes that, that's through sitting meditation. Sometimes it's through standing meditation. Sometimes it's through walking meditation. So we're going to do that. And then I also want to guide you into a much more in-depth um, kind of process piece of writing. So we might start with a free write and then go into um, deeper levels of, of writing in which we'll incorporate um, some metaphor. We might incorporate some imagery, um, some particular sensory detail, which is really important and really powerful. And um, and ultimately, we're going to work with that theme of healing and awakening. So I cannot wait. And that's just one of our presentations. And really the theme that how Albert described his, that embodied practice is, is one of the goals of all of our time together. We are going to bring you to that connection place so that your writing comes from that space. And we have presenters doing that in all kinds of different ways. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, so the link is there for you guys. And just, you can click and see about all of the other speakers and things we're gonna be doing. I think we had one other question yes. from Eddie. Yeah, go there for it. It was a question. It was, what is a healthy time frame to write a book, not editing, only the raw material? Um, you know, I think that's uh, really up to you. It depends on so many factors, including what kind of a book and um, and what the goal is and what the intention is. Uh, I like to crank out what um, I borrow from Annie Lamott and call the shitty first draft. I like to crank those out pretty quick. And um just to start to accumulate material. And um, so for example, I got, I, I sold, I sold writing as a path to awakening to sounds true on, um, on a proposal. And, and then they, and what happened, the way that works is that they, you know, then they send you a contract. Okay. You're going to write this book and here are the parameters. You've got eight months to write the book. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> so I sent them this proposal. And, uh, but I was so excited at that point, and I had written a proposal, which was 40 pages. I had um, written at least three of the chapters as part of that proposal. So I had some momentum there, but I basically cranked out a shitty first draft in about four months for this nonfiction book. But granted, all this material I had been working with and teaching for several years. So a lot of that material was just kind of in me. And and in my um, in my writing room, so it really really depends. Um, but I like for this novel project, um, I did about a year of research, and then about a year of writing a shitty first draft, 
And now I'm on year four and working on kind of like the, uh, I don't even know what number draft this is, but <laughs> so it really depends on the project, right? Um, you know, this little thing, which is 60 pages and has four essays, or no, five essays and an introduction, you know, it, it maybe took me um, six or seven months. So it, it's a good answer. The depends answer is really true for this one. <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it depends. It does depend. But um, I think what the one thing that you said about you were excited and it does pour out of you through that passion place. And so it can be faster than you think, you guys, you know. Uh, and enthusiasm with. is everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we connect and generate that enthusiasm is through mindfulness practice and through being in our bodies, through exercising, through generating energy. Um, and that could be through yoga, that could be through qigong, that could be through mountain biking, that could be through skiing. Finding your thing that gets you energized, it applies so much to our creativity and our general awakening. Um, all right, so Albert, uh, any very last words for today? Wrap up words? Last words, wrap up words. Yeah. Um, Love yourself, believe in yourself, um, write it down, remind yourself regularly. I have to do this all the time. You know, even though things have been accomplished and I have an amazing life and I'm fully, I feel truly, fully, honestly, very, very blessed. And yet I still go into that dark, weird place of doubt. And so I think just, reminding us all to love ourselves because loving ourselves is, is that way to, to love the world and to give of our true gifts of the world. And we need this love in our world more than ever. So. Mm. Yes, we do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Albert, for being here. Thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. What a blessing, Laura. Thank you so much for the invitation. And thanks so much to each one of you for being here and tuning in. And um, I hope to see you in Sedona. Yes, yes, yes. All right, you guys. Oh, my goodness, everyone. Phew, that wraps up our first episode of Seven Figure Healers. Oh, what did you think, you guys? <laughs> do you want to unmute and give Albert some applause? You're allowed to do that now. Go for it. You could give them a woohoo, whatever woo you want. <laughs> there we go. Well done. <laughs> thank you. You guys, you guys are well done, awesome. brother. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for walking your walk of awareness every day and for taking responsibility for how you show up in the world with your energy, your mindset, your aligned action. I'm so lucky to be surrounded with people like you all every day. You're all amazing and badass. And I love you all so much. So please, you guys don't miss our next one, Seven Figure Healers, when we're gonna be joined by world-renowned sound healer, Ashana Lobody. She is the founder of Sound of Ashana. And we're gonna drop the invite to that next show for you so you can sign up. We have her website. She's as well. awesome. Yes. <laughs> I saw her at the Sedona Yoga Festival a few oh, years good. ago. And she was fantastic. Oh, thank you for that shout out. Yeah, <laughs> she is amazing. Um, and Zoomers who are here with me today, stick around for a minute after the show, and we're going to do a little prize drawing for you guys. Lastly, everyone, remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it's time to be brave. See you next time, everyone.